Hello and welcome to another Commodore 64 tutorial. This time we're going to have some fun with random numbers and poke random numbers into specific memory locations to generate some audio and visual feedback. So the first thing we're going to do on line 10 here is print the character 147 which has the effect of clearing all text from the screen. And you can see here I've used the question mark instead of the word print. And once we enter that, if we list the program, you'll see that that question mark has been replaced literally with the word print. There was no space after the question mark before, so there's no space after the word print, and that's just fine for the Commodore 64. The spaces that we put in between um, commands and operators really are just for human readability's sake. Line 20, we're going to jump to subroutine starting at line 100. That will become clear later. Line 30, we are going to poke into a memory location starting at 54272 all the way up to 54296. So a random address within that range. We're going to poke in a random number um, between 0 and 255. Now, with the R&D command, um, the asterisk and the number following it denotes the upper bound, but that is not included. So you can see here the 25 will never, will, will never be generated. It'll be 0 to 24. And with this last, the second one here, it'll be 0 to 255. So 0 and 255 being the lower and upper um, most values you could fit in an 8-bit byte. Okay, so R and D, the one in, in brackets afterwards, just denotes it should be a positive value. And I'll put a link to uh, in the description, uh, which should just explain a bit more about the, the R and D function. I didn't want to go on for too long um, in this example about it. On line 40, we're going to poke into the memory location responsible for setting the border color, which is 53280. We're going to poke in the value stored in R, which we haven't set yet. Line 50, we're again going to jump to the subroutine starting at line 100. Line 60, we're going to poke into the memory address responsible for the background color. Again, the value R. Line 70 is a simple go to 20. Why not go to 10? Well, this program doesn't output any text, so we don't need to clear it again once that's already been done. And then line 100 is where our go subs are going to be jumping to, and we're going to set the R variable to a random number a random positive number between 0 and 15. So 16 possible values, including 0. And then 110, we're just going to return to wherever the go sub was, uh, was called from. So just to walk through, really, how a, a go sub command works. So once this one on line 20 is executed, that will send execution down to line 100, which sets up our R variable with a random number. Then line 110 is the return command, which takes us back to where it was called from, or the next command after where it was called from. So in this case, the return would take to line 30, which would execute, line 40 that would execute, then line 50 again sends us down to 100, that executes, then 110 sends us back up to line 60, and then 70 sends us up to 20. Now before we run the program, I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of little Commodore 64 shortcuts or abbreviations. You can see if you type list, obviously it lists the program. If you type L followed by shift and I, it produces that funny little character. If you press enter after that, it has the same effect as listing. And um, there's a similar shortcut for run. Instead of R U N, you could type R Shift and U, which gives you this funny little symbol, and then hit and enter. It would have the same effect as if you typed run. And here we have our finished program. So you can see the border and background colours just changing to, to random colours as fast as the, the processor can make it happen. What you can't hear because I've dubbed over it in doing this voiceover is the little pops and squeaks and whistles that are coming from the SID chip, but run it yourself on your own Commodore 64 or emulator to get the full experience.